Okay, hi. My name is Boazay, as you already know, yeah. Uh, and my presentation is about time. So it's about time to start it. Uh, this is so-called defensive timeout, yeah? So I will be talking mostly about defense. And uh, my presentation is uh, very differentiated. So right from the start, I do apologize for this confusion. I even posted this note with allergy advice, so I, I can see that this is almost epi epidemic, no allergy, yeah? Thank you for the full room. And uh, what, 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 am, what am I up to, actually, yeah? So, mm, okay. There is a lot of GIFs on my slides because I wanted it to be moving because this is about time and maybe that's why uh, it is not working, yeah? Defenders are losing, yeah, what do I mean? Uh, Joe McRae once said, famous pen tester, that this is because of certain bullet in your head list of security solutions that you have to work on again and again and again and again and again, yeah? So this time loop, Groundhog's Day, and it's not so bad, marriage, yeah? I, I send kisses to my wife and kids, but yes, viewing alerts on the information security productivity line is very rarely exciting. Requires continuous uh, deepening of knowledge, experience, skills, leading to the superhuman effort to distinguish why one day at work from the other, yeah? So, what should we do as defenders? Maybe we will just hack attackers, yeah? So there is even this kind of strategy in basketball. For example, hack a shack. Yeah, so maybe taking down botnets, offensive security, yeah? Maybe we should do a pen test, like Joe McRae. Uh, maybe it will lead us somewhere, yeah? Like Vidoc in France, he was first criminal, but then he appears to be starting the criminal police in France, yeah? There's Frank Abignail, a career path from expert forger to expert in forgery, yeah? And maybe in the end of this path, we will do time in prison, yeah? Like Kevin Mitnick. Those cybersecurity duels from last century, Cliff Stoll on Kevin Mitnick, Tsutomu Shimomura. Uh, it was more like Tsutomu Shimomura uh, versus Kevin Mitnick and Cliff Stoll versus Marcus Hess, yeah? So it is like one-on-one -on -one street ball, yeah? But I think that this is not one-on-one -on -one street ball anymore. Those comparisons to, for example, fights, yeah? When one guy is fighting another guy. I think this is more and more about the, the team play, yeah? Because what will happen when we will start to play according to the regulations, yeah, for every possession, every, every game, sliced by changes of tempo, overtimes, long season strategies, maybe even finals, yeah? It appears that we are getting in security to just another metaphor, yeah? So, basketball is one possible metaphor, yeah? But I'm a little bit sick of this world of metaphors, how to make those ba basketball metaphors more concrete, yeah? I don't know if you know, but Dennis Rodman is a good mate of infamous Kim Jong-un, yeah? And when we are talking about Kim Jong-un and Korea, yeah, we know that they hacked Sony, yeah? No wonder. This is leading expert in building biggest HD systems, and HD is abbreviation from human displays, yeah? Great for military parades. So we can see that it's sometimes hard to distinguish, distinguish facts for, from fiction, yeah? Uh, we are question, questioning who is, who is attacking, who is defending. Is this really about this one-on-one -on -one street ball when you have this change alternative rules like no blood, no foul, yeah? I think that, that in the end, when I would like to, to, to view a movie, the interview, but from the perspective of this attack, yeah? Do we have any knowledge? How, how, was it, how was it worked out? Yeah, what is the timeline? Bruce Schneier was trying to do it. It was like starting 2015, he was in Belgium and he had talked about this. But it appears it's not so easy to, to talk about security from this perspective, yeah? The guy that was, was talking previously about SOC, 
he was trying to get into this level of, I don't know how to say it even, abstraction, yeah? For example, for example, what is the plausible time span? Because we are talking about mostly about time, yeah? For, for some attack. Stuxnet, four vulnerabilities open at the same time, yeah? So they were just trying to make it quick. This is the assumption of one of the guys. You can find, find the full article in the URL, yeah? APT, 30. He's possibly working on shifts. Please enter your attendant code. Isn't this boring? So this perspective, this global perspective of uh, security uh, that we are maybe sometimes tired of leads to uh, this 24-7 tw uh, security operations. Yeah, for some must watch while some must sleep, so runs the world away. Hamlet, Shakespeare. But this time management, yeah, is, is obvious, yeah? Some, sometimes, sometimes someone is trying to do it with us, yeah? We have this working time, productivity time, yeah, measured in uh, fractions of the second, yeah? For example, my shoes, maybe someone was just making them, yeah? And someone just counted that it was not fast enough. Maybe we should do something more in the meantime, yeah? To, to please our managers, yeah? Or overtimes. It will be all written in the time book, time tracking software, yeah? Maybe we should join the initiative in the part-time or free-time, like the one from Cyber Army that we are trying to build. There was a talk about this, yeah? So maybe, maybe this is the good idea to spend your free time that you are not working at your company. And yes, we have creative people, yeah? It's not so visible on this slide, but there are artists, yeah? And they, they were active on different pa parts of day and night. But in the end, we are humans, yeah? We are not owls and bats that can just don't sleep at night and do, do your thing, yeah? But maybe if you are an attacker and your choice is between attacking systems to get some money or maybe making shoes, you will choose, yeah? <laughs> I know probably where some of you are right now, yeah? Where is cold? Where is pickup? Where are memory dumps, yeah? I have this mate at work, PJ. He asked me once, your talk about layer eight, what exactly it was about? Give me something concrete. Or maybe you think I'm too stupid, yeah? So this underlying implicit assumption that I failed was easy to read in between lines. We, in security, we are almost always trying to track those concrete things, yeah? But in my opinion, there is less and less concrete on this level of abstraction, yeah? But this is talk about time, yeah? We can do little time travel, like our hero Superman. We will go back in time. I will start my talk again. But now there will be different subtitle, yeah? You know Stephen Hawking, famous physicist, he wrote this famous A Brief History of Time book, yeah? Who of you thinks that Stephen Hawking is the more appropriate person to talk about time from physical security? Please raise your hand up. No one is raising hand, okay. So maybe there's another question. Who of you thinks that he will join Confidence 2015 in Krakow, Poland to talk about time and security? But there is one rule, this is not part of CTF competition, yeah? No hacking or hawking allowed, so please don't do it, yeah? I think that maybe some of you will be able to do it. And this is my quick solution idea, yeah? Like hotfix. I call it folk abstract concrete knowledge intersubjective theory, so abbreviation fuck it, nomen omen, yeah? It looks a little bit like some, uh, some caution of pack of cigarettes or, or smokes, yeah? So you can quit smoking or, or just trying to quit smoking, yeah? But I think that we are on different fuckiness levels with on so many things, yeah? And ideas about things and things that came from ideas, yeah? You can be, be specialist in one area of security, but you can just fuck it a different area, yeah? And in the end, we, just, we are just trying to build this 
overall abstract knowledge. And wh why this is important? Yeah, because because we we have this different uh, fields of thinking about about world. Yeah, we got technology. Yes, it's it's obvious. Yeah, we but we have different realms like business, law, politics, and they are here for hundreds of years. Yeah, so they are just prepared to make talks like that on this global level. Maybe we are living in the realm of World of Warcraft, spied by the NSA. Yeah. So in the end. Conceptually, information security is an incorrect, incomplete, in, incomplete, sorry, inconsistent folk art like witchcraft and alchemy in the Dark Ages, to quote famous Don B. Parker talk, maybe like 800 views on YouTube, yeah? So if we will not do it, business will, will do it. And there, is, there are great examples from people that are rep trying to represent both sides of the of this, I don't know how to say, mirror, yeah? There is nice talk about so-called timing attacks from uh, Chaos uh, Computer Club conference. And it appears that there are at least two ways to fight this type of attacks. We can fix our code. It's pretty obvious, yeah? We are mostly doing it, yeah? So to avoid side channel, if uh, we don't like anybody let know if the user is in our database. We should do always the same thing. It doesn't matter if uh, someone is or is not in the database. But the different solution is using pretty sophisticated statistics. Yeah. So this guy, this Sebastian Schinzel, he is a PhD from academia. And he was just feel, felt, I don't know, just he, he wanted to uh, be sorry about state of the art research papers from defenders about how to defend our companies not using just uh, patching. Do we really believe that this another vulnerability that leads to another patch idea about security is, is the greatest one? Yeah? There was an end on my previous slide. Is this end another metaphor? Yes? Because on the next level of abstraction, we are getting things more familiar, yeah? like a donut, yeah? ponczek in Polish. So is making a donut about sugar? Yeah? Is this ant holding a sugar particle? No, this is a microchip. So do we really believe that in the future solutions, micro solutions, we will be able to, to patch them? So. There are some, some ideas about uh, connecting those two worlds, uh, this very low level and high level uh, insecurity. Uh, for example, sticks. But sticks is like Klingon, yeah? There are a couple of cool dudes that are just figuring out how to speak in sticks. But we are mostly using the natural language. And there is a good uh, resource from Mr. Wolfgang Klein. He wrote a book about time in language, so this is book wrote in, written in English from the German guy about different uh, languages and perception of time in, in those languages. Oh, great idea would be my talk. You can already hear from my grammar mistakes and the pronunciation that I'm not a native speaker, yeah? So long translations and calcs from Polish will appear in my talk, yeah? So we are thinking mostly about security in, in a language. And the, the talk about time, I think that makes this need for proper language cleaned from the dirt of everyday life more obvious. So this is example definition, yeah? Encyclopedic definition translated from Polish, created by Kazimierz Aydukiewicz. And he has this idea that time is at least four meanings, yeah? So to try to combine this this, this, this definitions with the world of security, we can just imagine that moment, exact date, time point is the, the stamp like thinking about time, time period, time segment, time interval is process like thinking about time, the duration, the length is uh, password expiration time like thinking about time, and this all embracing time period, unlimited timeline. Is like thinking of time in the perspective of the cloud solutions and distributed systems. So, after the the end of this this kind of list from the world of security, yeah, we got uptime, 
how, how, how long our computers can be the off service, yeah, boot time, uh, how long should it boot to, to make the, to remaster the image, yeah, that we know that maybe there is something uh, wrong with the computer or in the hardware or maybe it is infected by malicious software. But on the end of list of terms used in security like that, we can get into things like Jiffy, yeah, so this is very unclear. Uh, word that we are using and depends on the counter in CPU, it may differ and on different platforms. So maybe we need more formal definitions. Yeah, this guy, Stefan Augustinek, this is a guy from Jagiellonian University and he wrote a book like hundreds of, page, hundreds of pages about time and he was trying to formalize the idea about what is time combining three worlds, yeah? So world, one world was the world of mathematics, set theory. Another was world of logic, uh, definition by abstraction. And the third one wo was world of physics, uh, so special and general theory of relativity. And his, his books was, was like 1,300 copies, so it's not Harry Potter. Do we really agree that this voice of the people, yeah, that people that, things that are, are popular will give our answers, yeah, this is not even digitized in any form in the internet, yeah, so, so maybe we should only read articles that are enough for the lunch break in security, yeah, to know exactly how to fight uh, different threats or do, do our defense. So, there was this assumptions, yeah? There's assumptions list in uh, the definition of Augustinek, and he wrote something like, time and its properties exist objectively. So this is very weird, yeah? But we, if we will try to talk about time in the physics perspective, yeah? So it appears we, we go to, from Parmenides, that there is no change and no time, then Newton, famous one, yeah? Classical physics, where there is absolute time, then the Mach relativity, but this is version 1.0 about relativity. And then Einstein's relativity combined with a mathematician from Russia, Minkowski, space time, yeah? So in the end, it appears that time, according to Julian Barbour, he's the most contemporary researcher in time in physics, is, is nothing, yeah? He is killing time, literally. So he told you, he will tell you that we are only observing two completely different triangles that are moving into space and there is no connection between them, yeah? Wheeler the Witt equation and calling it with the fancy name Platonia will not change your feeling that this is some kind of this model, yeah? Some kind of washing band universe. And in the end, he will tell you that you are thinking about time in like, like in the, this classic time uh, timeline, yeah, idea, and this idea is not a good idea, yeah, so no time, no, no problem, with, if there is no time in physics, then there is no problem, maybe I should stop my talk in here, yeah, because there, if there is no time, so what am I talking exactly about, but there is always technolo technological part of the problem, yeah, time in technology equals clocks, but what clock do I mean, yeah, maybe sun, is the first clock. This is the view of the sun in Arctic summer. It is not, there is no night and day. So I think that the invention of time was not from, from there, yeah? From the anthropological perspective. So we got this, those sand clocks, sand clocks, water clocks, fire clocks, mechanical one with pendulum, with wheel, with temperature compensation, yeah? But in the end, we, we are in 21st century, so we are thinking mostly about quartz clocks, electronic clocks, like the one from Owen in my kitchen. But it appears that when there is no power, uh, it will be reset to uh, 12, and uh, the function, Owen function in my uh, kitchen will be not working, yeah? So it is the DDoS, DOS, sorry, uh, for this function. But this is pretty similar to, for example, personal computer, yeah? If there is no CMOS battery, uh, there will be a reset and you will have call from uh, uh, one of your clients and he will tell you that uh, internet is not working. 
And after the little chat, you will notice that what he means by internet is HTTPS connection to Google, and it's enough to have time around three months uh, for present time to, to make it work again, but maybe he should use something like ATP. NTP, sorry. But NTP server on Windows platforms is made like that depends on the registry configuration. It will not synchronize when there is more than 15 mm, hours of difference. So if this is a computer in uh, our organization that is using Active Directory and Kerberos protocol, it will be a problem because it's enough by default five minutes to make Kerberos not work. But it is our organization and our time, yeah? If there is a problem with time, then there is a problem with time on every computer. Uh, so this is not a problem, yeah? But it depends because, for example, PKI implementations uh, for services that we are using outside of our organizations are using uh, time stamps as well. So in the end, we are getting into most popular way of managing time of in distributed systems, NTP. It was created by David Mills. It is David Mills' lifetime project. 30 years from 1985 and NTP in zero version yeah, to NTP4 that was co-authored by, by different guys. And I think that this, this equation that we are seeing in the middle of the screen, this is the only thing that survived those 30 years. Yeah? So it's changed completely. There are things like uh, encryption added in NTP4, but does your organization use NTP4 and encryption? Please check it. And there is also a definition section, yeah? Time scale is a frame of reference where time is expressed as the value of multiply increasing binary counter with an indefinite number of bits. They are figuring out a way to overcome the 2036 problem and they just invented so-called NTP era. So after, after 2036, there will be next era and then the next era, then the next era, yeah? So we are thinking about time in per perspective of hundreds, maybe thousands of years, yeah? So you know that we will go through the stratum of servers here yeah, and there is the highest strata, like zero strata. And those, the zero strata higher is, is so-called atomic clock, yeah? This is invention of Louis Essen, made in the, in the 50s, so this atomic clock, but there were uh, some plays with time made by hackers and this confusion that if you have only one clock, it is not a problem, yeah? We, but we, if you have at least two clocks, you have to know which one of them is showing the right time. And definition of the second from 1967, the duration of over nine billion periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. Yeah? And after 30 years, they just added this sentence that it refers to a cesium atom at rest at a temperature of zero K. So 30 years in physics, it's nothing, it is nothing, yeah, but in security, it's, I think, enough to make a little bit confusion. But we are not on this level of sun anymore, yeah? So we are not about sun in time. We are thinking in the perspective of technology, so atomic clocks. Is this true? So it appears that there is this international atomic time, but for civil time, there is UTC, known from our systems, and UTC have things like leap seconds. To quote Linus Torvalds, every time we have leap second, we find something, and in the end, it is, there is UT1 compared to so-called solar time. So in the end, we are just about uh, rotation of the, of the Earth to, compared to some so-called static stars. So leap second, two times a year. And when we are comparing those uh, clocks, atomic clocks, we are using things like two-way time transfer, uh, using a satellite. Is there any encryption involved? So it appears that in the end, time transmission 
is all about physical layer, yeah? So, uh, if it's, is it secure? Uh, it depends so mostly on uh, if you are optimist or pessimist. Mm, I will try to be realist, yeah? If this is all about physical layer, so every encryption would add some additional latency and we want to avoid this, we want to make our time more and more precise. Maybe in the end we want to make the time scale uh, equal to uh, this cesium atom. So uh, are there any things faster than speed of light? So no, there are no detectable things, but there are things that are faster and we can detect them, for example, by using, using long wave uh, mm, time transfer. For example, DCF77, it is from Frankfurt, popular in Germany and Europe. Is it secure once again? No, there is a resource in the internet and it appears that your sol soldering skills and just determination and of course law uh, are only obstacles to make everyone in your area wake up two hours later and finally get some proper rest. So is this time really important? Because I'm just asking if uh, this business extension into security, so-called risk assessment, yes, this is the greatest idea, uh, how we can, for example, count money uh, after blackout, like in Turkey, yeah? So we, we sh is there any amount of money that is enough to, to count uh, our, 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 our financial problems uh, about outages like that? So I think that time is something that we can measure, yeah? Time as a service, it's not some science fiction. This is done by, by the NIST, yeah? National Institute of Standards and Technology in the USA. I was trying to ask if our laboratory, laboratory of time is doing things like that, but they didn't answer. So uh, it is to make everything about real time, yeah? We are using those algorithms. No one is buying uh, at the stock market using uh, mouse anymore, yeah, it's made by the automates. There's a great talk about this on TED. I encourage you to, to, to look at that. And after this financial crisis in 2007, there were ideas like making uh, time banks where people can just share services between them and every hour spent on making service to someone else were stored just in there, yeah? You can hack the tax system this way because Taxation systems are not prepared yet to tax our time. Maybe it will change in the future, yeah? So making this simple, I'm not, I'm not doing it uh, so, so maybe too often, but this is all about money, yeah? But this is harder, this is about fair money. It's almost like oxymoron, yeah? We are trying to avoid latency and jitter that everyone it doesn't matter where, where, how far he is from the system that is making the money. He has the same chance to buy some pile of actions at the same time, yeah? And this, uh, this document is a great because there is a state of the, art, of the art compared to current problems in uh, distributed systems, in Internet of Things and technologies that are in, uh, the future technologies, yeah? So, cloud systems, time in cloud, sorry. Time systems, time in cloud. So, um, we should maybe call cloud what, what it was back in the days, yeah? Time sharing, because maybe some marketing genius will, will lose his job, but we will be, be more, uh, the, the security will be more visible. Because there is this logic clock, yeah? We are not tied to the physical clocks. We can do logic in, uh, in the way that systems are working. And this logic, like uh, Lamport time stamps, can just align events in the sequence that we are trying to implement, yeah? Maybe something will happen a couple of milliseconds before and something couple of milliseconds after, but it should, shouldn't be this way, yeah? So we can just try to fix it. But in the end, it will be a time cost, yeah? We will 
it will cost some time and we are not uh, interested in, in making our systems less real time because what is this real time really? And there are problems, Sing single point of failure. I'm, I was talking about lead day, leap day, leap second. This is about leap day back. There is a great postmortem written by Microsoft about this issue for 13 hours their cloud solution was not working because of time problems, yes? Yeah? So leap second, two times every year, leap day back, once in the four year, and millennium bugs, maybe once per millennium, yeah? There is a lot to, to search in there. So how to do the large scale defense, yeah? We can always laugh like Joe McRae is laughing. I'm not trying to attack attackers here. Yeah? I know that they are doing a good job to show us where is the flaw, but I don't want to maybe protect or, or be a, an advocate of, of those solutions yeah, that uh, Joe is smiling at. Yeah? But in the end, what, what is left for us? Yeah? If we just try to do this time travel to the moment when there was an attack, uh, what is what, what left for us? If even if we are trying to analyze malware like Rombertic, the time consumption can be an obstacle, and it is like hundred of gigabytes. You you have to have like 25 minutes to even store this data. So yes, this is about abstraction. We are looking at security logs. It is not working very well. Maybe maybe it should be should be about capturing the pickup. Yeah, Joe was laughing at pickup, but he proposed even this in, in one of his talk, yeah, that we should, should aggregate pickup. So I think that there will be more suicides in security. And how, how exact can be the copy of data from our networks, yes? From, from like millions of endpoints. So it's like black hat shooting in the Western movie to one million bottles, yeah, with, with the gun. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy to attack. It's maybe not the most easy way in the world, but you can attack one of million endpoints in big organization. And in the fraction of the second, modern CPU will process amount of data enough to, uh, to fill Google data center. So maybe we should, should capture from, I don't know, my smartphone data in the Google data center, then, then analyze if there was any threat. I think that in the end we have to have those abstract ideas about what we are doing in large-scale security. This, this uh, photo on the left is from, uh, made by Ernst Mach, and a liquid physicists can count like speed of the bullet from, from those waves, yeah? But in the end, he will not tell you who, will sh who shoot the, the bullet, yeah? Why he shoot it, yeah? Uh, from where and things like that. So if you are at the crime scene, like in confidence conference, it's a little bit like, like the crime scene, yeah? There is a lot more questions to ask than the speed of the bullet, yeah? Or the, how malware is working, yeah? Yeah, this is important, but, but this is not enough. So this persistence of memory, yeah? What are we involved in? I'm just... I'm just about the truth, yeah? What, what we are doing in security. Maybe it's like in uh, this Salvador's Dali picture, someone was stating that this is about special theory of relativity, but in the end it appears that it was about camembert cheese melting in the sun. So are we about science of cyber, or maybe art of hacking, or about this compliance fiction? So we can do the shortcut, and maybe this is about science fiction. So we made this travel back in time, and now to avoid the time paradox, maybe we should go, go in the future, yeah? So this is good definition, because from this perspective, every lifetime project in security looks like uh, temporary hotfix, yeah? conditioned by knowledge and social efficiency ways to achieve its goals. 
Other goals, often unwanted, are appearing, and this is typical, yeah? So we are building our technology, and there we are trying to implement security in our te technology, yeah? and this is already challenging. So looking into the future, we, we got things like this timeline, when you can just combine things that someone was predicting with things that were actually implemented, and this is more and more filled with actual solutions that came from sometimes crazy ideas, so, so things like time paradox or, or time travel. No, yeah, we are trying to do time travel back in time or in some uh, so-called back in time debugging with our uh, even contemporary solutions, like for example, SIM. And uh, we are going to, through those time loops, we are trying to analyze the same set of data once again, and there will be a new approach, and we will analyze it once again, and maybe after a month we will know about some vulnerability, and we will analyze it once again, and it will appear that there is some way to combine this level of abstraction with this level of concrete. Yeah, in the laboratory environment, yeah, it's not easy to do, like from the abstract data, we have to combine those two worlds. Now, things like bullet time, known scene from Matrix movie. So there are group of, there is group of inventors that are trying to implement it it's in, in our networks and when we will just stop the time for some detected uh, malicious traffic, you can just try to block it in the fraction of the second. So maybe they will manage to do it. And what concerns me when uh, I'm thinking about the future is mostly our cryptography because cryptography is uh, about time com complexity in our ideas about mathematics. There was a great prelude for this kind of thinking about physics from previous guy that was talking about trust boundaries to physics. Are we, are we thinking that our physics is, is okay? Is, there is no bug in physics in our idea? Yeah, because quantum is already there quantum cryptography, and we are trying to build quantum computers. In the end, maybe it appears that our cryptography is, is good for, for this classic ideas about how to build computers, but not for the future. There are even models, for now, mathematical and logical models, like infinite time Turing machines. I encourage you to read about this. This is mind-blowing stuff. And time-lapse cryptography, so you can just unpack this time capsule in the future, just to store something that is secure till the right time will come. Was there any inception attempt in my talk? Yes, it's obvious there was multiple inception attempts. We were going deeper and deeper, yeah. I think that defense might be cool and it doesn't have to be nice at the same time. We have to build so, some, some idea about defense that is cool because I know that it can be boring and exhausting and I think it is harder than attacking. But if we don't want to work with problems like that, then it will not be solvable by some, some marketing genius that will sell, sell another box. And uh, I think we need to go deeper and deeper and sometimes fuck it, yeah, just try to be involved in things that are not obvious right from the start. Spend some time with time in your, in your areas of specialization. Uh, I think that maybe it is not a millennium bug, but millennium of bugs, and we can find something related to time because we are more and more involved in making our systems real time and speed it up. And fight entropy, yeah? It's not only about fighting, fi fighting entropy on CTF competitions when there is encryption involved, yeah? Because on this micro level, world is probabilistic. On this classical physics level is, is predictable, yeah? And on the level of global security, I think it is probabilistic once again. So it's not easy. It's easier to uh, destroy something than build something and protect it. And this Eddington's arrow of time, I think it is, it is obvious in security world. Get familiar with boundaries of your ignorance, yeah, because I think that being ignorant, we are not stupid. 
we are ignorant, yeah? we don't know many things. That, that's why it's this fuck it approach. We can be on different levels of fuck itness, on different ideas about how security is working and just admit this. Yeah? And this balance between figure out and configure out, sometimes you just have to configure out some security solutions to protect the environment and sometimes you, can, you have to think outside of the box that someone is selling you. Yeah? Try to figure out the way that the box should be working and it is not working uh, right now, yeah? but maybe it will be working like that in the future. So why we should do it this way? Because there is this confusion, words, write letters and cheat you, yeah? so it's all about words. The word hack or hacker can come from things like hacking with our intellect through some problems, cut roughly, cut with chopping blows. But hack, in the past, it was, already, it was also a person hired to do the routine job. If we will think about our job that this is an only routine job, then maybe we are more about hack, being hack, and not hacking. And those are two good series about medicine, because there are some comparisons between security and medicine, yeah? So we can do it like, state-of-the-art Dr. House is doing it, buy some solution from a company that is providing it and make a surgery, uh, even remote surgery. So once again, in remote surgeries, it is all about timing and time. Or you, you, you can just admit that we are just starting this, yeah? So we are more like this guy from 19, uh, 19th century that is trying to develop some procedure, but he is mostly covered with blood and people are dying, yeah? because maybe a hundred of years before us and we will maybe manage to do it not the tag life way, yeah, but to do it more properly. You can be badass defender, yeah? Do it, just, you, you can be like, like Dennis Rodman. This guy was crazy, maybe even in, insane, yeah, but he, he made a good defense, yeah? You don't have to be a good person to make a good, good defense, you can be cool. I think that's, that's all. Thank you.